Hello everyone, welcome back to the Ride with Lance. And today, I'm gonna to talk about the five things I like about the Hemiway Zebra. Yes, I am on the Zebra today. Felt like going out for a afternoon ride. It's not too hot. Got a nice creek, stream, little river right next to me. So let's get right into it. Number one, the power. The power on this bike is, is pretty phenomenal. If you're in PAS one, two, three, four, or five, it gets up and it goes. And it wants you to get, to get you to speed as quickly as possible. But not only that, it's, very, it's a very strong power. I guess you could say torque. Because this thing will climb hills really well. Even with a 250 pound, six foot guy like me, it handles inclines extremely well. The only thing I would, I feel might be a little negative about the power is again, in any PAS level, it does come on pretty strong. And uh, if you're not ready for it, it might give you a little scare. But once you get used to it and you know when to expect it, you're fine and you'll probably love it. You'll really enjoy it. You'll enjoy it a lot. Okay, number two, the display. Even though it's uh, just a, a black and white display, you can see everything clearly. This display is not too big. It's just the right size. I can see the speed, I can see the battery, I can see the PAS level, I can see my wattage usage, and I can see the miles without having to squint. And for all of you who are getting older in the years, I think you know what I'm talking about when I say squint. And I like how they have it mounted a little lower instead of up here because for me, I just don't like a lot going on up here when I'm riding or when I'm trying to shoot a video. I really don't even like having the phone up here unless I need it. But today I have it up there because I have no other storage on the bike. And I don't want to put it in my pocket because then it feels like I'm, I'm weighted down on one side too much. Number three. It is a very solid feeling bike. And when I say solid, I don't mean heavy feeling. I mean, it feels like it's built to be ridden off road. And I will show you an example. It is very nimble. And it's a bike that feels like it can take it. Take the off-road. And then just keep on going. And what I mean by nimbleness is the turns. You don't feel like the front end is gonna wash out on you unless you're intentionally trying to make yourself crash. Stuff like this. Feels great. I don't worry 
about the front end sliding out on me. I do have to be careful here, going through here for poison oak, especially when I'm wearing shorts. But this is what I mean by the nimbleness. I'm keeping traction, and this is kind of hard packed with a little loose, little loose dirt on top. And it's handling it just fine. All right, number four, the design. The design of this bike is very clean. And what I mean by that, there's not a lot of junk hanging off of it. The wires are tucked in where they need to be. These wires up here, you can see they, they come wrapped like that. So there's not a bunch of wires just hanging loose, flip-flopping all over the place up there. And they go into the frame and basically disappear. You see a few in the back going to the, to the motor, but it's tucked underneath the frame, so you don't really see it. And the design, I think, is one of the, the better looking designs of this type of e-bike out on the market. And like I said on number three, it's just solidly built. This thing can hold 400 pounds. And it looks like it can hold 400 pounds. And you'd think that it would look, it would make it feel like it's a real heavy bike, but it really doesn't. It's just a nice clean design. They did the finishing work is pretty top notch. The paint job, the graphics they put on it, and just the overall look when you're just looking at it sitting there is really nice. At number five, the front suspension. Now, it's not gonna compare to a, a mountain bike's long travel suspension, but for a bike that, what this was designed for, cruising and some off-road, it does a, it does a, a real good job. It does a better job than the, the Rad Rover, than my Rad Rover. Has a little more travel than my Rad Rover. But I believe it just has more adjustability in the compression and rebound. So, it soaks up the hits when it takes it, and it doesn't bounce back real hard. And overall, between that, the front suspension, and the Suntour seat post suspension I have, riding like this, you would think that you have a full suspension e-bike. Now granted, it's not going to feel that way when you get down on the trails and it gets rough and you're trying to sit down then you're gonna feel it. But you should be standing up or at least in the attack position anyways when you're on a trail, just for those un unsuspecting obstacles. But that's it for my five things I, I like and enjoy about this bike. So of course, there's gonna be a few things that I think Hemiway could improve on. And number one is, the brakes. If you're out on a bike path, like, like, you know, a paved bike path, a sidewalk, a street, the brakes do fine. And I'm not saying that the, the brakes are bad anywhere, but when you're doing off-road, you do want something that has a better feel to it. 
and I do worry about brake fade even though I haven't had it yet. It would uh, just be nice to have a, a more solid fill. I don't know if it means bigger brake pads and a bigger rotor or dual pistons. But I think for how they're trying to market this bike as an off-road vehicle or an off-road uh, e-bike, that brake performance could be improved. All right, and number two, again with uh, the suspension seat post. Coupled with some decent front forks that it already has, a suspen suspension seat post on this as stock equipment, I think would really put them over the top. And I think you would see more people coming after this bike just for that reason. Because if you're marketing an e-bike as an off-road bike, as I am riding right now, and people get it, and they ride it with that stock seat you give them, uh, they may not be enjoying it. But if you give them that seat post suspension, I think there'd be very few complaints. All right, and number three, the battery. Now, not the battery performance, but the battery location. It is in a good spot, but I tell you what, it is just a bear to get in and out. Because first you have to use the key to unlock it, which is good. You don't want anybody stealing your battery. But then there's a lever under there you got to move. Then the battery starts to drop down. But then you have to have the front wheel in a certain position to be able to get the battery completely out. And sometimes that can be tough. Because sometimes, you know, you have to use both hands to get that battery out most of the time. That front wheel doesn't want to stay in place. It wants to move around. And if it moves around too far, then the fork is in the way. If it doesn't move around enough, then the wheel is in the way. Now, I know you could say, well, just plug it in the wall. Don't pull it out at all. That's great if you never plan on putting it in your car or putting it on a bike rack and taking it somewhere where you want to take the battery out. but maybe that's something they can look at in future designs too. Maybe getting it put up here somewhere instead of down below, where it can be more accessible, a lot more easy. But overall, I love this bike. I love it just as much as my Rad Rover. Both offer something different but both offer something fun and great. All right. Well, I just thought I'd get the, the five things I like about the Zebra and the three things I think could be improved off my chest. So it's off my chest now. <laughs> but anyways, I hope you all have a, a great day, a great week, and I will see you on my next video. Bye. Speed it up now. See you later, everyone. <laughs>